welcome everyone to our customer experience series webinar. Um, it's, I know it's uh, early for quite a few people, but uh, I know for two of our panelists, uh, they might be going off to bed after this. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> uh, again, a warm welcome. And uh, just to run through some housekeeping, um, we would uh, be popping up. Uh, if you have any questions during the session, um, find that Q&A button somewhere at the bottom of the screen. Or if you're using a mobile, I think you need to swipe up or left. Um, you can pop your questions in anytime uh, you think of it. Don't, uh, in case you forget later. Um, the questions will be public. So if you see a question that is um, something really relevant or something like, you know, I really want an answer, uh, do upvote it so that, uh, because I'm sure we will have quite plenty of questions and we may not have time to get through everything. So if the ones that get upvoted highly, we will try to definitely get, get to them. Of course, if we don't, um, we would uh, we will get to it later and post it up uh, post webinar. All right, so I think uh, besides that, uh, there will be a poll and uh, shortly as we start, it will be helpful to the speakers and the panelists that um, you guys try to fill it in so that we have a better idea of where to tackle or maybe to phrase the questions or to specifically mention strategies that would mitigate those uh, challenges that you have. So I think uh, let's get started. I'll pass the time over to our moderator today, Dr. Muniwalui, to start us off. Hi. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as I introduced, my name is Munira Lui, and I'm the founder as well as the CEO of Brands International. Uh, we are primarily very much uh, uh, have a CX consulting practice, uh, and we also do manage a mid-sized BPO operations uh, in the areas of uh, customer management, HR services. Uh, supporting the regional markets. So um, over the course of the next one hour or a little bit more, uh, I'll be kicking off the Brands Webinar Series number one on CX. Uh, and the theme for uh, the first webinar, as you probably see, it's, it's primarily around busting digital transformation myth uh, to accelerate a business. So with me here are our expert panelists, uh, that represents Brand's global business consulting team. Uh, and they have essentially have many experience uh, and has led transformation across uh, the world uh, in their different roles. So please welcome Ted uh, from LA. I believe it's 7 p.m. there now, Ted. <laughs> Ted, and then we have Sybil. Uh, she is no. from New York. And it's probably 10, 10 p.m. at this point. Yeah. About is 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 your bedtime, I know. Um, <laughs> and of course, Andrew from from Malaysia. So Ted, uh, Sybil, Andrew, uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, and as a start, perhaps we can just have a quick uh, one minute introduction of yourself first. So we, this is going to be a new norm. So I'm going to start with the gentleman first. <laughs> <laughs> Like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Um, Andrew, would you yeah. like to go first? Okay, uh, I'll go first then. Um, okay. Thank you so much for having us uh, to the uh, Brent International team. Uh, it's, good, it's great to be here. And uh, Thank you so much for all the folks uh, who are dialing in, uh, joining from wherever you are. Uh, it's good to virtually meet you here, even though you know, we can't see you, we know that you're there. Um, hopefully, you know, we'll be able to uh, have uh, an engaging discussion here uh, you know, on the topic that uh, a lot of us are you know, on top of mind these days. Um, a little bit of a background you know, as an introduction. Uh, my name is pronounced Ted. When that as in hypothetical, T H E T. I wear many different hats, uh, but you know, uh, the last uh, 20 years or so, I've been working in the top tier of e-commerce industry since the very beginning of the commercial internet, and uh, you know, working primarily in the technology arena. You know, started mm -hmm. with the uh, you know big brands, uh, Disney.com and uh, Go.com. I actually mm -hmm. launched the very first page of Go.com, so it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, learned a lot and, you know, started working in the e-commerce industry uh, from the very beginning and uh, grew with it as well. Uh, mm -hmm. A few years later, I, you know, migrated into the 
uh, biotech industry, and uh, ba basically did more or less the same thing with the uh, e-commerce. From there, a few years later, I joined, jumped into the consulting world. So I've mm -hmm. been in the e-commerce and technology consulting for the last uh, uh, 15 years or so. I've worked all over the US you know, as a technology lead or engagement lead. Uh, and uh, also in the Latin America, a little bit in Canada and uh, Australia as well. Uh, in the Asia Pacific, you know, I've worked in uh, my home country of Myanmar as well, you know, working with the Japanese partners mm -hmm. over there. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of the brands, uh, I've worked across a number of different industries from energy through retail, through, you know, fashion industry, uh, you know, food services, etc. cetera. Uh, it's been a lot of fun and uh, I'm glad to be here. And uh, thank you so much again for having us. Thanks, Ted. Hi, uh, I'm Andrew. Um, very excited to be here. Uh, good to be on the call with everybody here. I'm sure we have a very engaging session. I hope it's very engaging. So <laughs> I, I, I really want a lot of people on the call to basically ask us uh, the questions that you need to ask. So don't be shy. Uh, yeah. So most of my experience is uh, we have been with MMCs. Um, I very much focus on customer experience journey in my in my career, most of my career, most of my years in my in my career. Also, in terms of execution, execution as well, I think that's very important in terms of not only mapping out the journey but also executing. Last few years, we've been very much involved in digital business transformation uh, across Southeast Asia, uh, uh, in the Philippines, uh, Cambodia, Indonesia, and Malaysia as well. So. Uh, have been very much involved in a lot of those organizations in the region and uh, the markets that's happening in the region. So mm -hmm. I say very excited to be here and uh, looking forward to a very engaging session. Thanks, Andrew. And Sybil. Ah, hello, how are you today? Um, thanks for inviting me. I'm very excited to be here. And, um, you know, I'm jo again, joining from New York. It's really late at night, <laughs> but that's great. And um, over the last 15 years, I've been actually leading strategy and transformation across a number of consultancies as well as agencies. And um, some of them being IBM IX, uh, Conduit, and Proximity BBDO, DDB, and McCann. So have really gone through the, from a marketing perspective, the back end as well as the middle end. So making sure that all of it is co continuous. Um, right. So it's really, it's given me the privilege and the opportunity to really work on some of the most loved brands while at the same time having a great, great range of industries, both private and public. Right. Really excited about this particular topic simply because I think at this point in time, it's not just a, it's not a nice to do, but it's so very important in so many companies, it is about survival at this point. So right. I think it's really timely and I'm really excited to be here talking about this. And I know how many misconceptions there are. I mean, personally, for me, I'm very passionate about digital transformation because I see that it really helps companies to activate their purpose, uh, tap into the digital potential and humanize their businesses. Right. And you know, this is a very important time that you know, we need to be talking about this. And there are so many, such a swirl of confusion to many people around this particular area. So right. happy right. and excited to have this discussion. I know it's going to be lively. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks. Thanks, uh, everyone, for the uh, kind introduction. Uh, let me try to frame um, the discussion so that, you know, we can use that as, as, as the basis for us to engage in discussions around the myths of the digital transformation. Uh, I believe, I think all of us are essentially very aware prior to even COVID-19 uh, in Southeast Asia uh, in particular, uh, there's already an active uh, uh, initiatives around uh, digital transformation. Uh, as early as even mid-March this year, uh, we've heard Microsoft uh, Malaysia's managing director, K. Raman, has also stated that the digital transformation is essentially accelerating uh, in Southeast Asia and is expected by uh, 2021, at least 48% uh, of the region's uh, GDP uh, will be derived from digital products and services. So while the numbers are essentially uh, uh, staggering, um, but with COVID-19 coming in, I guess everything got, got accelerated, uh, you know, and, and uh, uh, in, in as far as digital transformation plans are concerned, uh, as what Sybil mentioned, right, uh, you know, uh, 
digital transformation used to be a smart strategy, but today it's essentially a survival strategy, right? So, uh, so there's a lot of buzzwords now in, 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 in the last couple of uh, months around digital transformation. Um, and uh, obviously in that process, there's also a lot of confusions. So we hope to be able to, uh, in the next hour or so, uh, we will be able to discuss uh, some of the misconceptions around digital transformation. Um, are you all there? Okay, I got you guys. I thought I was uh, disconnected. Okay, so we hope that um, in the next couple of minutes, uh, we'll get to discuss uh, with the panelists around the misconceptions uh, of digital transformation and try to uh, debunk at least uh, four of the most common myths uh, around uh, digital transformation, all right? So uh, before we uh, start uh, with the panelists, I would like to just frame uh, a couple of definitions here. I think one, it's really about uh, digitization uh, and digitalization. I think these are two very key distinct definitions that perhaps sometimes we get confused. Uh, when we talk about digitization, it's really about uh, ability of an organization to convert information from a physical format into digital uh, one. Uh, while digitalization is really about how do you leverage on digital technology uh, to change the model and provide new revenues and value producing opportunities, right? So I think for the context of today's discussions, we will be talking about the later uh, part uh, definition. And I would like to then kind of bring across uh, this definition uh, uh, on a slide, if you can, uh, Eugene can pull this out. Um, and hopefully sets the framework for the panelists to, to uh, have this discussion, right? So if you look at digital transformation from this definition, it's around a change in business activities, processes, competencies, and models to fully leverage the customer's experience at every touch point and to augment and create new value for people, your business, as well as the society, all right? Uh, sounds academic, but uh, perhaps I can point back to uh, Sybil. You know, what are your thoughts from a strategy perspective uh, and specifically the part that talks about augmented and new value for people, uh, your business as well as society? Why, why those three things? Well, I think what's interesting about this definition and what I like, I mean, just the word transformation itself when we take a look at defining that, that's a metamorphosis. You see a lot of times where it says it's a change, a, a becoming. I think what's great yeah. about this, this um, definition is that it is comprehensive. So what you see right. is it is a change in so many elements and so many different things where I think that's really important to, to understand because even us as people, when we grow and we, yeah. you, know, you, you go from a baby to an adult, you know, you're transforming, you're changing. And so everything changes. And I think that's very much like, um, you know, companies, when they, when we, then they just, when we tra transform, everything is part of it. And it's not necessarily just one or the other. I would right. say on the every touch point, it doesn't mean that every touch point has to be digital, but it does mean that, you know, it's a comprehensive journey. And I think, you know, Andrew's going to be speaking more to that point as well with regards to the journey. But the, the elements of, augmenting and creating new value for people, your business and society. I think that's, those are the right three filters. And when I say right. why there are the right three filters is that ultimately when we say value, value mm. even in defining value means, it means there's a usefulness, there's a worth, and there's an importance to something. And so right. when we take a look at it that way and we say, well, obviously we need to have value so that people will buy you or be right. interested in you. Also, yeah. that people will actually work for you because yeah. there has to be yeah. value for the people that also work. And right. then, you know, we take a look at um, business. It also have to, has to make sense for the business, that there has to be value for the business overall and sustain the sustainability of it. And right. society, extremely important because I do believe that when we think about business, businesses are in service of, you know, their, their, their purposes are usually about impacting the world beyond right. just making money. And right. I think nowhere are we finding that as important as right now in this moment when we see a lot of folks, a lot of consumers, mm. a lot of people are looking at mm. the companies and saying, 
what are you doing in the middle yeah. of this moment? And right. this is, it's, it's heightened. I mean, we, we've always seen that, you know, people do purchase brands or buy from brands that they actually trust, but also that they feel are doing some good in the world, particularly the right. Gen Z and Gen right. X and those folks as well. So I right. think this is a great definition with this comprehensiveness and the three right. filters, they're the right filters, I believe. Okay, sounds good. Well, Andrew, what is, uh, is there anything in this definition that you think needs to be highlighted uh, from, from an APEC uh, perspective, Asia? Yeah, I think uh, for me, the word is every touch point. I think yeah. as people highlighted that as well. A lot of times when companies embark on the journey, they underestimate this. Uh, mm. It is necessary, obviously, to map and review the touch points. And when I mean mm. touch point, when, you, when we say every, every touch point, that's the key word, right? Uh, it's mm. just not uh, the way you sell your product. It's also the whole supply chain and everything else. But it's beyond that. How do you attract the customer? How do you get customers into, into, in, into interested to buy your products and everything else? So right. it's about mating the end-to-end -end processes, uh, mm. whether it's internal business process, but especially the customer journey as well. I think there's a marriage of those two things that is very, very important. I always like yeah. to explain it in a simple way. Uh, when you talk about a physical retail store, Right. For example, if you run a physical retail store, uh, this is about having a situation where a customer can actually walk into your retail store, right? browse, uh, compare, try, buy, and then pay, and then walk out without having an interaction with anybody in the store. So mm -hmm. if, if you're able to do that, right? if, you're, if, if, if you're able to achieve that from, from the total journey perspective, map all that out, and build something that is totally self-service, totally interactive, uh, without human interaction. That is where uh, it, 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 that is where it matters. But having said that, it's not easy. Uh, mm -hmm. So when you talk about the value for the people, the business, that's the total change uh, in terms of how we do business and, and, and how it should be done. And obviously, along the way, in, in the whole transformation, if you don't engage the customer, if you don't make the customer interested in your products, in, in what you're doing, and you lose the engagement with them, uh, you, you will also lose, lose the whole thing, whole plot with the customer. So for me, every touch point is a very uh, critical word in that whole uh, statement. Yeah, indeed. Uh, interesting uh, insights. Uh, well, I'm going to come to a tad now. I'm going to assume that... Uh, you're going to have issues with this definition since you're coming from the technology uh, side of it. Uh, nowhere <laughs> in the definition, right, is there a technology word. So, uh, Ted, any, any comments on this? Uh, you're not allowed to fight, though. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> let, me, let me go through the text again. <laughs> no, I, I don't have any problem with it at all. No. Um, okay. and, 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 and here's why. So many people have gotten it so wrong, uh, but we'll talk about you know that aspect you know when we cover the myths. Uh, the digital transformation really is about strategy and new way of thinking. So you know both of you have covered it in uh, you know different aspects of it. Uh, so strategy has to lead this digital transformation, and mm -hmm. for the technology to succeed, for the digital transformation uh, efforts to succeed. Um, mm -hmm. So as a CDO. Uh, I would be successful if the business plan is done properly and done it right. Mm -hmm. And that will allow the technology team to pick the right solution and put the roadmap together and implement it and phase it out and execute it in proper sequence. So the technology is a key part of the, the entire digital journey, but it's not the, it, it's not the only thing but it has to start with a strong business strategy. Without the business right. strategy, you, know, you will not be able to execute it well. Uh, right. I mentioned earlier that uh, you know, we have to find the right fit, you know, pick the right technology. So the mm -hmm. technology team you know, under the umbrella of the business strategy would have to do their own discovery to identify the right approach, the right solution, and, uh, mm -hmm. and then that will help enable the business strategy as we go mm -hmm. through the different phases. Uh, right. So from that perspective, you know, technology is there. I don't need to see it in the text. I'm, I'm fine okay. with that. <laughs> okay, so we are square, good. <laughs> so we can move forward. 
Right. Uh, so now let's take a look at some of the top disruption uh, myths. Um, and, and I would like to point to the panelists here. The first myth, it's technology is the super, superhero. So I'm going to give you the honor of Ted to, to kind of, uh, you know, talk a little bit about this. I've got a question to, to you, Ted. Uh, in a recent survey, uh, found that, you know, typically the lack of understanding of technologies available to support digital transformation projects is primarily the cost, 51% uh, of the firm's uh, uh, failure. So how do you therefore reconcile you know, if digital transformation isn't about technology? It's not digital, it's not technology's fault though. I, I like to put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> it, okay. it's, it's not, um, mm -hmm. but you know, there is a fact that, you know, people sometimes do not fully understand the technology and uh, mm -hmm. technology of a particular solution or particular technology, but they ended up acquiring mm -hmm. it and implementing it for a number of reasons. Uh, it could be because of the marketing hype, and uh, it could be uh, because of the pressure from the C-suite for whatever reason. And without actually doing the uh, proper uh, strategic thinking uh, from the de digital technology uh, strategy perspective, and or sometimes you know, without doing the, the fit cap analysis. So what I mean by the fit cap analysis is that when you go through the digital transformation, uh, you have you are guided by the business vision, business goals, and the business strategy, and mm -hmm. that gets broken down into a number of really fine-grained uh, strategic uh, strategy um, statements, strategy mm -hmm. pieces, and then right. you go through the discovery of the actual requirements. And right. once you get the requirements locked down, what you do is you do a fit cap analysis, looking right. at the diff, uh, various options that are available to look to see which one would be a better fit for this set of requirements. And mm -hmm. you go through the very fine grained uh, analysis of each individual um, requirement against mm -hmm. the feature that the platform or the solution provides. So you can have, uh, okay, this is you know, out of the box, this is, it's available. Uh, it's not out of the box, but it can be configured to get mm -hmm. that outcome. Uh, if right. it's not configurable, then it can be customizable. If it's mm -hmm. not customizable and not configurable, it's not out of the box, then you obviously need to do something about it. And that's what we call right. a, a sensible. So right. all of these things need to be put together and analyzed. And then you go through the requirements prioritization process, and then you end up at a, a, a spot where you could find the right fit between the timeline the resources available, both human and investment, and mm -hmm. the, the the priorities that you have. And right. that's where you define the scope of what sort of solution would be needed and who needs to be involved, et cetera. So right. if this kind of uh, fit gap analysis is not uh, undertaken in a structured, regimented way, the digital transformation or the solution uh, could be, you know, will, will not be on the right, uh, part to start with. So right. what I'm trying to say is, is it's not that the technology is not important, it is, but it is not everything. You have to work with various disciplines come together. So the businesses also have to do the due diligence upfront and start by um, building the digital capabilities in-house, or if they don't have it in-house, bring it in to create mm -hmm. a strong, compelling customer experience as uh, Andrew was pointing out earlier. And mm -hmm. what are your, you know, from the business perspective, what are your core operations? Exploit right. that, strengthen it, uh, leverage it, and then look at the business model to see whether it will make sense to uh, create, uh, reinvent the business model as well. So regardless of the industry or the geographical region, businesses must overcome, uh, have, have, to, have to become much more uh, digitized, uh, and our lives also have become much more digitized. So whoever is leading the digital transformation and done well would have to uh, keep that in mind. Um, okay. So one more thing, you mentioned about the 51%. My right. question is, what about the 49%? So it's not just digital, there are other issues too sure. that we sure. should be mindful of. All right. 
So, so what we're essentially hearing is, is that uh, while technology is important, uh, but it essentially has to be kind of driven from the business and, and let the business uh, define uh, the whole uh, solution architect uh, and then bring in the technology, uh, which is custom fit to help uh, deliver your whole uh, CX vision, right? So um, maybe I, 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 yeah. Go ahead, um, uh, Ted, yeah. Um, I, I would say that uh, strategy has to lead. Uh, business yeah. strategy, uh, business vision, and then you know you break it down a customer experience strategy you know uh, mm. social media strategy the content strategy so on and so forth but right. it is the, the overall strategy that is really important and uh, each discipline has to work well together collaborate right. on executing that strategy uh, right. Sybil would you like to chime in yeah I mean I, I think Number one, brand is also, when we say business, I think brand mm -hmm. has a lot to do with it as well, because what is the promise? Because even mm -hmm. if we take a look at two airlines, mm -hmm. probably a bad example right now, because probably nobody's <laughs> getting on the airlines. But if you were to actually go through and say, where are all the pain points? We probably are going to find that two, most of those airlines are going to have the same pain points. The only differentiated experience is going to be based on the brand and what that brand promises and that's going to differentiate that so i think it's important mm -hmm. that that is one component the other is that you know what are the and and probably andrew will go into more detail on this but is when we take a look at the functional requirements they should also include the human desires as well as the needs so that Absolutely. how should during this journey or at this touch point how, what do they feel? What do they do? And how, what are they thinking? And so then when we start to say, I mean, technology is only the enabler. And so it's right. literally to say, which of that, which of these technologies are going to make people feel this way because of think, feel, do, and then which are actually going to pay off the promise of that brand mm -hmm. in its own unique way so that mm -hmm. when they're having that interaction, it's the right thing. And I think that's where a lot of folks, I've seen a lot of folks when they write their functional requirements, they're right. actually writing, get this done in five minutes so that they can achieve this. Well, right. that's just so very functional and has nothing of the human being in it. So it's really right. hard technologists to actually start thinking about, well, what do I use? Because anything will do, but the reality is we all know so right. one interaction, one, one screen, when you touch it a certain way, that feels like a Ritz Carlton, uh, you know, Ms. Carlton experience, or right. it feels like a holiday Inn experience. Mm -hmm. And they are very different. And so I think that's, that's really important. So right. I think the strategy as well as, uh, you know, knowing the business, but uh, and business goals, but the brand as well as the human, um, the human needs and human desires. Right. Okay. Well, uh, according to the Cisco uh, research report, it suggests that the biggest challenge, at least from uh, South, Southeast Asia perspective, it's uh, our gap in technical skills. Um, maybe Andrew, we can hear your thoughts about, you know, uh, you know, whether this, how does this, uh, your, your, your thoughts around this, this uh, research findings? Well, I, I wouldn't say there was a gap in the uh, technical skill sets uh, having, having mm. uh, worked across the region. I think it's the yeah. appreciation that uh, any digital transformation starts from the business strategy and needs. Yeah, mm. and, and, and we spoke about it quite passionately uh, about technology is, is enabling that. Uh, right. I'll give you an example. I mean, I, I was involved in, in a project where they said that we, we, we need to get the, the, the web and the app done very, very quickly. And, and we did mm -hmm. it, right? After mm -hmm. we launched the, the whole thing, the question that was asked by the C-suite was, so what now? Uh, mm -hmm. There doesn't seem to be a change in terms of uh, uh, the business revenue and new customers coming in. I said, well, right. it points to, have you done enough to talk about why you want to, to embark on this in the first place. Uh, why right. are you doing it? Is there a market condition to do it? Uh, today's right, market right. condition say, say, I must do it. Yeah. But you need mm -hmm. to go back to your market, your own individual market and say, is there really a need to do it? And mm -hmm. can you effectively deliver what your customer wants uh, going into digital transformation? I think it's not about, I have to do it. It's more a question of why do you want to do it? And then if you peel back and saying, okay, I want to do this because, and that leads to 
what is the what is the the the, the KPIs? What is the target you're looking for from 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 this? Once that is clear and and you understand what you need to do, then you you talk about the technology. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I I is digital transformation. It's not called technology transformation. If we're having a discussion on technology transformation, yeah, fine, right? Uh, right. So it's, it's a very different outcome you're looking for. I think a lot of us who have embarked in a lot of projects. Um, whether it's a CRM project, whether it's a billing project, uh, there's a low expectation where we expect technology to lead. Uh, in some cases, yes, uh, if, if the, the, there's, there's a lot of business understanding, but the business needs to take lead in, in that situation, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. that you don't end up when you launch something and say, hey, this is not what I want. Uh, this, right. this, this doesn't meet my business requirements. Uh, then it'd be too late. And then that's why we point to about 51% of failure. Uh, where the business uh, doesn't get involved and expect this to be driven uh, by only a team, which is a technical right. team, right? Right, right. Thanks, but thanks. Uh, on, on, yeah. on, on the flip side of it, though, mm. the people, the businesses who are able to successfully um, transform themselves digitally um, have seen significant gains. So about 26% more uh, mm -hmm. revenue increase for the businesses who have done it really well. And then 9% of those were able to do that without increasing any physical capacity, meaning that their physical capacity remains the same and they're able to generate 26% more revenue. And that's mm -hmm. something to keep in mind as well, uh, right. to do it well, to do it right. Um, right. One more thing that i like to add uh, because um, Andrew gives a, a very good example of the uh, contactless uh, checkout, etc. Today, the uh, technology is not just e-commerce, uh, not just the you know uh, mobile app, not just the uh, shopping. The IoTs are everywhere. We all know that. Uh, there's a lot of install experience, and there's a lot of uh, multi-sensory touch points and multi-sensory experiences. So that data is coming in. That data is available. So how, you know, what to do with that, you know, how do you plan on connecting all the dots and mm -hmm. blurring the line between physical and digital? And now I think it's a new term, digital is there out there. So, you know, yeah. all of these things have to be considered yeah. as well. Right, right. Thanks, thanks for the sharing. And um, I think we have dwelled uh, enough into the first myth. Uh, it's clearly very uh, uh, obvious that uh, while it's seen as technology. It's the uh, the myth is always seen as technology as the superhero. But uh, as you can see from the panelists, uh, uh, it has to be the business driving the the whole uh, transformation, right? So let's go into the second myth, which I kind of like this myth because it's always the one million dollar question, right? Uh, the myth too. It's that. Uh, it appears that this quest for digital transformation is only for the rich and famous. And, and I can connect with uh, the audience that we have today. Uh, at least 70% of the audience are actually coming from the SME sector. All right? And there's a lot of um, you know, uh, uh, call for action to go digital. Right? So the question is, you know, is it going to be expensive? You know, how expensive is it going to be? Or... You know, it is only meant for the mid and the large tier companies and so on and so forth. So uh, perhaps, uh, Sybil, you know, you have worked with many large uh, uh, companies in the world who have the money, uh, the backing and the time to be successful. But what advice can you give to the smaller companies uh, and examples that you can actually give? Uh, considering that, you know, we have about 70% of the listeners now here are actually uh, from the SME uh, outfit. I think when I think about uh, just situation even that we're in right now, I've been working with some yeah. startups that are actually, you know, smaller and as well. And I think yeah. what I've found is that there are definite advantages because mm -hmm. of the agility. The, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the alignment comes very, very quickly. And I think what happens in larger organizations, organiza larger organizations, it takes a while to get some of the most important things actually happening, which is, mm -hmm. you know, alignment, clarity on, what are we doing? What stages mm -hmm. are we doing? You know, getting everyone to agree. And mm -hmm. at the same time, what I've found as well in terms of some of, some of the research has been that 34% of smaller companies are actually seeing uh, immediate benefits 
when they actually invest in that transformation. And it's not necessarily that you have to invest. It all depends what is the problem you're trying to solve and what are the mm -hmm. challenges that you have in your industry. What industry are you in? What problem are you trying to solve? And then what are your competitors and what are your challenges? And mm -hmm. one of the things we have seen is that really it isn't necessarily how much you spend, but how you spend it. And, you know, that, that becomes very, very important. And what we've seen is that folks that are spending it by looking at their entire, uh, their entire business and saying, what are activities that have expenses that we don't actually need? And why don't we take those expenses and you know, mm -hmm. transition the business differently and then take that money that you save and then put it into digital transformation? So being mm -hmm. smart about how you do it and mm -hmm. not necessarily think you, have, you don't also have to do it immediately everything you don't have to do everything just staging what are the most critical things that your business is facing and identifying those and then staging it and like i said i've, I've found that the agility the mobility and just the alignment that is so necessary it, it goes quite quickly when it comes down to smaller companies than larger mm -hmm. companies and there isn't mm -hmm. the weight of the politics and all of the this the silos you don't I mean, what's critical, uh, what I've found in larger enterprises is what's critical is, you know, taking those silos and busting those silos. You don't have to do that in a smaller business. And right. even, you know, some medium-sized business, they may have their own silos, but I think it, it, it's, it's a lot easier. And I think everyone is very, very clear about why they're in this business. Right. It, there isn't, you know, 5,000 people that you have to uh, clarify why you were doing this, why are we doing it, so many uh, possibilities that you, it's mm -hmm. broken telephone. There's a lot less right. broken telephone when you're smaller and you're a lot more nimble. It's just, sure. and, you know, I would say there are so many opportunities right now with, um, you know, I would say options for technology, data, any of those that are services that are very, um, you know, they're not very expensive. So on a monthly basis, you pay for what you need, you right. pay for the level that you need, and so you can right. get into business pretty quickly. Um, and as well, the whole partnering, partnering with right. others. Yeah. You know, in the past, it's always been you go it alone. You don't right. need to because I think there's an ecosystem of mm -hmm. assistance around the board that you can actually work with. Sure. Right. Thanks, Abo. So SMEs in Southeast Asia, for me, uh, makes up the bulk of the GDP. Right? So, uh, what tailored advice uh, do do you have, Andrew, for SMEs in this region? I think in terms of our discussion, it 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 it, it hinges on a few things, right? It it mm. actually doesn't matter whether you're a large or a small um, uh, SME, uh, because the the process that you get through. Uh, mm -hmm. starts with, we, we spoke about it, right? You need to understand the why you want to embark on the digital transformation journey in the first place. Mm -hmm. I always look at it this way. Um, in, in terms of you have your current set of customers that, that you have now, the question you should be asking is, why are the customers in the same market space looking for the same product not buying from me? Uh, mm -hmm. What are the reasons why they're not buying from me? I think that's a, that's a good start for everybody. And we right. need to understand why they're not buying from me and am I meeting their needs? If you just focus on your current set of customers, it's uh, more of the same, right? So the question, if you want to gain market share, if you talk about market needs, that's probably the starting point of why I want to do uh, certain things, right? Uh, number two, uh, I always look at the, we talk about end-to-end -to -end touch point and, and, and I, I mentioned a, few, uh, in a couple of times. You can actually do bite size and it doesn't have to actually involve the customer. I, I, one situation where, we, we actually map up everything and we said that probably the first thing we need to do is digitize the, the, the supply chain, making mm -hmm. sure that we, we know what's coming in, what's going on, and being very efficient and effective in terms of doing that. You can start very small in, in, in that sense. And, and a lot of uh, digital transformation doesn't mean uh, that you have to go uh, and involve the customer in the first place. You can basically do bite size uh, and, and look at your internal processes that we, we spoke about. Number mm -hmm. three for me that is very important is, is your company ready for it? Uh, is the team ready for yeah. it? Are you, are you equipped to do it? Uh, yeah. and, and I'm sure a lot of SMEs that is listening now, you, you have even seen micro SMEs going into this mm -hmm. and being very, very successful. Uh, obviously, partnering with, with, with some of the companies we have, uh, if you talk about micro, you can talk about KFAs, you can talk about yeah. Grab, you can go about Foodpanda. 
But beyond that, I've seen micro SMEs that has gone out and do it by themselves. And they can be very successful as well. Uh, so right. it, it really goes back to well, why you want to do it, right, in the first place. Understanding that and taking, and, and it's not uh, a sprint, right? You have to take bite size in terms of how you want to do it and what's right. critical for you to, to focus on. And right. uh, definitely look at, your, look at your company and your team, especially yeah. are you equipped to, to basically move to the next uh, step. Right. So Ted, coming back to the, the technology side, you know, how, how do you keep up with all the new technologies and uh, tech skills if you're not big and you don't have tons of money to kind of you know, uh, uh, invest in uh, technology? I know Sybil talked about uh, the SaaS model now, it's, 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 getting, uh, it's, it's the way to go. Uh, but what are your thoughts around the technology uh, point? Because people always equate technology means it's multi-million dollar kind of a, investments um a couple of um, things there i believe yeah. Um, yeah so you know to keep up with the uh, changing technology from skill acquisition perspective as well as the uh, solution architecture mm -hmm. or solution option perspective uh, mm -hmm. so from the skills perspective it's never been this easy to learn a new skill it's very easy and very inexpensive now to learn anything literally that you want. Uh, there are a lot of uh, options out there from top universities to the top vendors uh, who have published their own uh, tutorials and uh, documentation and uh, case studies uh, and uh, code examples, et cetera. And uh, there are also, you know, there's also the community support for any aspect of any particular technology, even if you're not, you know, what outside of what we're discussing, even if you are a, a recording enthusiast and you like to learn about a new particular tool or you're in a, you know, video production and you want to learn about the color grading of a particular uh, software, there are a, a ton of resources out there that, you know, one can go to. So, you know, it's very uh, low cost. The only thing that you need, uh, actually not the only thing, uh, you know, what you need to know is which is a good source to acquire this skill set uh, mm -hmm. and then make the time to do it and make the time and commitment to do it. So there's that. Right. In terms of the solution implementation and solution options as well, again, there's never been a time like this where things are very inexpensive. Uh, we used to you know, put the uh, uh, solution estimates together and nothing is under a million dollars. You know, back when we first started, uh, a feature that you, that comes out of the box now would cost us millions to implement because there's never been done before. Um, you don't have to do, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money to mm -hmm. even start getting into a new territory that your uh, business currently does not have. Uh, all you need to look at is the software as a service model that uh, Sybil yeah. also mentioned. And uh, mm -hmm. a lot of the vendors today offer free trials or free accounts. And yeah. uh, in fact, uh, some of them have the free tiers where you could just sign up and just start using that. The, you get assigned a sandbox where you can start building it. Mm -hmm. But I like to mention something that is also very exciting, uh, which is the democratization of the software development and solutioning, which mm -hmm. is to say that it's a local development. You don't need to be a C++ programmer to start putting the solution together. There are a number of uh, big businesses out there who are offering these solutions. So Salesforce being one of them, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Monday.com being another one. And then and in the integration piece, you know Zapier, or do you pronounce it Zapier? Uh, it's another one. Uh, what you do is uh, you just go in there and uh, pick up the pieces that you like and start assembling it, start connecting it, and boom, you have it. So we use Slack. A lot of people are familiar with Slack uh, as a communication tool. Mm -hmm. If you are using a CRM system like uh, HubSpot, where you have all your customer information uh, data captured, it's all online, it's all you know headless. All you have to do is just run a connector and then boom, you have the ability from the Slack window to query your CRM data. Mm -hmm. Imagine doing that a few years back. It will be a lot of money to do that. Mm 
uh, to accomplish something like that. Um, I hope I answer your question. It's you know a little bit longish. Two things: yep. learning and implementation. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Ted. Um, just a reminder for for the listeners. To, you know, please to, uh, feel free to ask any questions uh, and uh, uh, post it on the Q and A uh, chat so that you know we can bring forth to the to the speakers. And it makes my job easier, so I don't have to ask all the questions, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, time time is 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 uh, running out, and and I will want to kind of just uh, move uh, move forward with the third myth, um, and it's primarily around easily done with hard stop deadlines. Um, so in this unprecedented times, um, uh, folks are I mean everyone is kind of looking at easy answers, you know, that work quickly. So, so that uh, you know, this statement is more comforting, right? So, tell me what can, you can share to help businesses manage this. Uh, maybe we can start with with Andrew first, right? Uh, so, in in this situation, I actually had an experience where I came in very late to the to the to the party of uh, the digital transformation, uh, right. and and they 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 uh, they basically told me uh, you need to do it by a certain time. Right, you need to complete it by a certain time, and uh, it, it has to wow the customer. So it was a very, very uh, 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 big brief that 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 we have. Uh, so, in in terms of the implement implementation, uh, we we basically went back to say, uh, what what are the things that uh, you need to be you you're looking at from your from your business perspective, right? So, uh, what what we looked at was. Uh, if you think about digital transformation, it's actually part of your business. Once you embark on it, it becomes BAU. It becomes business as usual. If you think of digital transformation as a separate arm, then then that's 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 going to be a problem because okay. it is part of your business. And you and if you're running it as part of your business, as any company, you always look at improving your business, uh, how to be more right. efficient, how to be more effective, how to be cost competitive. So right. digital transformation is the same, right? If if right. if if it's one of your channels, then you basically have to have to have to treat it as one of your business and always look at opportunity how you can improve it. Um, right. So the, the the example I mentioned, we basically built a very clear KPI uh, and the target of what we want to do as an outcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this relates to the question that was asked: How do you prioritize all the things that everybody wants to do? We we yeah. we call it a beauty contest, right? Everything mm -hmm. that you want to do, what's the what's the business value out? Come you're expecting from it. If you want to launch a feature, and there are ten features, we actually rank it and say which one gives us the best value, either from a business perspective, from a customer perspective, and we rank it and say how much does it cost us to basically develop this feature. And then mm -hmm. when you do a cost comparative, oh, you can say it's a financial model. You say okay, this is how it ranks. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, the one that's ranked number ten could be your favorite feature that you want, but you can't do it because right. from a ranking perspective, it doesn't give you the optimal value that you're looking for. So to mm -hmm. me, uh, you constantly have to review. It's like, it's like part of your business already. Yeah? Right. I, I, I feel right. digital transformation is part of your business. Right. So writing on what Andrew says, Sybil, what, what would you think is the most important area you feel companies should focus on uh, at, at this moment? I think it's really understanding the customer what exactly has changed? And I think right now is a very important moment to say, what are the behaviors that are going to change? What are, the, mm -hmm. what are those things that have changed in people? What are the things that are, you know, have stayed the same? And what are the things that in the next three to four months, I think there's been a lot of uh, research being done around how long do people think that this is going to last? You know, COVID-19, some of the, you know, some of the behaviors. We're talking about like three to four months in some areas, and obviously a lot of different countries are different. However, mm -hmm. I think it's really, really important that you keep your eye on what the changes are in consumers and with people, because I think if you, if you just focus on that, you will always be ahead. But if you lose the momentum to actually take a look at that, like example of, of one of our clients, which was a public transportation client, and mm -hmm. they hadn't touched their experience and their business for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, you know, we did it. And then, you know, it's gone. 
I said, right. well, no, 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 no. And now you've got all these, they are spending money in call centers. They are spending money in, uh, you know, people are complaining. They're spending money, so much money that is being, you know, wasted because no one kept, you know, their eye on the ball to see what is changing. What are the things, how are people right. paying for public transportation, all these things. And so right. I really think keep your eye on the ball of what is happening. And right. also, also all of the metrics and your KPIs, because if something's not working, monitor your data, monitor what right. is happening, identify where are the key pain points. And, you know, once you identify the data, the data will always has, um, I would say, the data speaks. And mm -hmm. data is a conversation. And if you follow the conversation, you can usually see where the problems are and then, right. you know, identify what has changed, whether it's your competitors, whether it is, the, you know, your customers, but you can't, you always have to, I would say, outside in. Look outside right. always, understand your insides, but for people mm -hmm. who always are focused on their inner efficiencies, inner mm -hmm. workings, and aren't seeing mm -hmm. what's happening, what's changing outside, I think that's right. the biggest thing. Right. And right. it's Thanks. never done. <laughs> right. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, I think we're going to just very quickly move to the, the fourth myth. Uh, which I believe, I believe uh, the panelists has essentially uh, uh, touched on. Uh, and the myth really is business goals and strategies have nothing to do with, with, uh, with it. Um, maybe we can start off with uh, Ted since uh, you know, Ted didn't get a chance to talk a little bit about the myth three. Uh, so what is your advice uh, you know, in terms of having to, the bridging between IT, uh, CMO and the C CEO gap? I think that's, that's primary uh, a major concerns in, in any form of trans, uh, this digital transformation. Since time is running out, uh, I'm going yeah. to try to keep it uh, really short. Um, yeah. So it's really two words, communications and collaboration. Mm -hmm. From the top down, the C-suite mm -hmm. really has to communicate and uh, collaborate together uh, right. and have the uh, clarity of the strategy and the business direction thoroughly mm -hmm. defined so there's no fuzziness allowed mm -hmm. crystal clear strategy and business direction defined mm -hmm. and the C ceo and the cto and the cmo working hand in hand and uh, collaborating mm -hmm. and uh, uh, creating a clear understanding of what is expected and what the mm -hmm. strategy is from the organization level from the business level so mm -hmm. it used to be that uh, the CTOs are not involved, you know, VP of IT, et cetera, were not involved in business strategy formulation. That's right. not going to cut it now. You have to right. get them involved from the very beginning. The technology solutions now become a lot easier for the business side, be it marketing mm -hmm. or whatever, right. to implement the business solutions without writing a single line of code. Right. That right. doesn't mean that the technology team doesn't need to get involved. They have to keep a line. That's right. one. Number two, keep the internal service delivery and the um, this digital transformation strategic initiatives separate. So you've got the printers and the and the hard drives and the computers and the network that you know the uh, IT organization maintains and mm -hmm. uh, provides services to as a cost center keep that separate and yeah. have the digital initiatives as a separate track and have them focus together. They all right. need to you know, uh, work together on a common goal. Please let me right. comment briefly on what you said earlier about the, the mid three, yeah. just yeah. because uh, I felt very strongly about what Sibyl was saying, data. Data is very important. Uh, so I, I'll be very quick. Data quality is very important. A lot of the time, I walk into a lot of businesses all over the world and even the largest organizations very poor data quality cost the organizations tons of money down the road to fix it so get it locked down early on before you start putting systems together and then privacy issue and the security issues one more thing devops development and operations together providing the uh, uh, devops solutions that allows you to integrate all the solutions together and roll it out live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just to give you an idea, a few years ago, people were releasing solutions 
the most efficient shops were releasing solutions weekly. Today, it's not even daily. Amazon releases new software into their production servers every 11 and seven seconds. So mm -hmm. let that sink in, 11 and seven seconds. So what you need for this entire digital transformation to be successful is a very nimble, effective processes and ownership and communication. I think I think my time's up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks. Thanks, Dad. Uh, I, I guess um, you know we we need to kind of uh, you know have a wrap up now uh, in terms of um, uh, you know what has been discussed. So perhaps I can just ask uh, each of the panelists here: What's your overall personal opinion about what is most important piece of advice uh, that you can actually leave um, you know with the audience? Um, things that you can actually share with business thinking about embarking on their digital transformation. So perhaps we can start with Andrew first. Okay, so I, I think we spoke about how business and technology has to come together. We talk about every touch point with the customer experience. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing that I probably want to leave as a, as a final word is to make sure that whoever gets involved in the, in the, in the whole digital transformation, that means the C-suite plus the team that gets involved, Mm -hmm. Make sure they have a pause go live KPI that measures them on an ongoing basis. The success of the whole transformation doesn't stop when you go live. The success of the transformation is when you meet the business objective that you have set out. So the team that is actually involved in this whole thing, and typically you say the, the C-suites plus the project team, they will be measured pause go live. If you don't do that, People move on to the next project and if they, 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 they don't care about the success or failure of what you have just implemented. So the only advice I have is keep them accountable at least for, this, for the next six to one year so that you can mm -hmm. see the constant change that goes into the, the, what you have implemented. That actually impacts one, the business, and two, the customers. Right. Thanks, thanks, Andrew. Um, Sybil, any final words? I think it would be a shared understanding of why you're doing this digital transformation and what you have, or what you are looking to gain. I think right. if, if, it could be that you have one department that's accountable or any, but whoever is accountable, ensure that you bring the rest of the teams along with you. That's so incredibly important. And also mm -hmm. ensure that you share the results or the stages that you're at continuously to keep the company moving and aware of what is actually happening and where you're at because I think the other thing I would say is culture understand your culture because if you have a culture that's in need of a lot of communication then pay attention share what you're doing when you're doing it and, and, and I think that's really important so the shared understanding and paying attention to the culture that you have right. and ensuring you know why you're doing it and measuring it right back to right. Andrew's point measuring is very important Right. So, Ted, your final words. Thank you. Please let me build upon what uh, Sibyl has just said. The culture. No, is you can't. <laughs> <laughs> you are not allowed to do that. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> well, culture, culture is very important. Yes, and the sharing is also very important. Uh, but mm -hmm. at the same time, what is very critical is that the businesses start looking to create that right kind of culture. The right kind of culture as in, you know, if you look at the uh, Silicon Valley startup culture, that with the agile methodology, agile decision-making and rapid prototyping and flat organizational structures, those have mm -hmm. been proven to be very impactful. Now, with that also comes the culture where people, and, and the, you know, what I said earlier about the, um, DevOps, continuous integration and continuous delivery. Mm -hmm. In that agile environment, what becomes very critical is the need to nurture the culture that allows people to make mistakes and get away from the blame culture. That's gonna be very, very impactful, very helpful when you put that all together. Uh, in my uh, last parting words, I'd like you all to remember that Change can happen for you and to you, but 
um, by you, but not just to you. Be in charge, take ownership of it, and run with it. Good luck and all the best. Right. Thank you very much, to Ted, Sybil, and as well as Andrew. I wish we have another hour. I think there's just so much to discuss because this topic is just extremely broad and, and I think we, we certainly need answers. But uh, for the listeners, this, is, this essentially represents our first webinar. Uh, we will have our second webinar to continue to talk about the myths. So we look forward to having you, uh, uh, you know, to come on board. Uh, to again listen to another uh, panelist uh, session. So I'll pass it back to uh, um, Eugene to close the session then. So thank you very much for listening in. Thank you. Munir, do you thank want you. to answer? I think Iwan has a question. Do you want to take that on? I think, uh, I think Iwan asked, uh, how can companies that embark in digital transformation compete successfully in the increasing crowd, increasingly crowded market space? and how customer service can be an advantage. I think um, the panelists, you guys have talked about CX, has talked about the customer journey. And I think it's quite an interesting question. I think maybe, I know we have overrun our time, but it may be good to just uh, look at, see what uh, organizations can do, maybe to differentiate themselves. Okay, we'll, 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 for those who can stay, we can stay on. Uh, would that be okay for you, the panelists? Yes. yes, another five minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think Iwan Kamaruddin is coming all the way from Indonesia. So it's a good question. To, um, so open to the floor. Uh, probably probably I'll, 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 I'll share a bit. I, I think all of us, are, I think in Indonesia, you have all the platforms that, uh, that, that you can get into. And it's really crowded in Indonesia anyway. Uh, so the key question is, there are, there are specific reasons like, for example, you and yourself uh, going to any platform and purchasing from, from any platform, you know what works and what doesn't work. So essentially, a lot of it is around a user experience. You go into any platform that you use today, it's about the user experience, how, how, that, uh, is, if, how effective that is. And while customer service can be an advantage, I think it's more about the user experience that you go through uh, and the, how effective and efficient it is. Because if you, if, you, if you go to any platform that you do not feel the, the user experience is there, uh, the effectiveness of, 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 of the, the whole experience that you have within that platform, you wouldn't use it. So it's back to how, uh, how, how bad the user experience that you get through, through that platform. And I think also like when you talk about customer service, so even when you have the chats on your website or anything, right? how helpful is that? And, you know, are you using the information? So are, do we know anything about that experience, what that experience is online, that you can at least in three quarters of that journey, you may be able to, uh, to tell people with the online chat. And then if, you, if there's enough repeatable questions or repeatable um, activities, then you can actually have that. Uh, you can use AI to help you um, automate that. And then for those questions that are really, really important, then you go off to a live person to actually have that conversation. So I think, you know, making it easy that um, it, it can be done self-service, a self-service way of being customer service at the same time, so that you've got two pronged attack on that. So you can do it for yourself and answer those questions. And at the same time, you can um, have someone answer it as well live. Mm -hmm. Please allow me to chime in to what um, Sybil has just said uh, from the customer service a solutioning perspective from the technology perspective. Uh, we have implemented solutions a few years back. Uh, it's evolved quite a bit now, meaning that it's been available for quite some time. Uh, customer service uh, center is where the customer service agents would be interacting with the customer having the question. So, you know, with the AI, et cetera, you know, out of the way, this call or the, this solution, uh, sorry, this uh, uh, call for help came through to this customer. What the customer service representative would be equipped with is not just the history of this customer, the current problems that this person is having, the order history profile and what's in the shopping cart. And on top of it, based on the business direction, what are the upsells? What are the cross-sells? What are the uh, you know, like uh, pro uh, products? 
what are the also bought products, so on and so forth, along with the script that is provided to the customer service rep to go through and check through. So all of this, the technology is out there, the implementation is not difficult. What is difficult is to get all of those pieces and working across the organizations in putting it together. Hope that helps. I think the other right. thing that I would add as well is if you can find a way to understand the context of that customer, because context is, I, I think, so important. Everything. So when yep. someone is actually, I remember it with a, a bed that was being delivered, right? You have a 91-year-old person who's getting a bed, and that company had said, you have to take all your beds out so that the new bed can be delivered. Yep. And then there was no delivery of the bed. And then they're like, well, don't worry. In a week, you'll get the bed. They don't understand the context. So if there's any way that you can become more of a sensing organization and find ways to get information on the context, whether it be questions and that script, whatever that is, the more we understand of context, the more helpful we can be to people. Right. Well, I think we still have another uh, interesting question, which I like to bring to the panelists. Uh, I, I think we still have a lot of people online. So it looks like uh, People still need answers, all right? So this is this question comes from Keith. Uh, my question for the web, uh, for, it's for the webinar would be from the IT perspective. So if digital transformation is business led, how would tech initiative and test the ideas in productions to show business that we are ready when you are? Mm. Um. Simple, A-B testing and uh, putting the solution out, creating uh, a, a quick solution that would uh, meet the requirements, but not all the way there and putting it out there to see what sort of responses you get. A lot of the businesses are now doing the A-B testing. And it used to be that A-B testing is very difficult. Now with all the different data points that are available, different uh, data analytics that are available, it's very easy to do. It doesn't add a lot of cost into uh, to pull it off. So that's that's one solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think a lot of companies need to take advantage of the beta testing, right? You you see a lot of yes. things that's put out in the market that is called beta, and beta allows you to basically tell the customer, I, I'm I'm allowed to make a mistake, <laughs> and uh, that's the test point, right? Uh, we need to be able to test because to another question that uh, Richard has on on the chat, he's talking about. Um, how, how, how do you know when the market is ready? Um, to me, a lot of times, uh, people will say that the customer don't know what they want. Uh, but in a lot of situations, uh, the, the biggest gift, gift that you can get is talking to the customer and understanding what they, what they require. That's step one. Uh, mm -hmm. But the second part is you, you do need to do the, the A-B testing, like what Ted mentioned as well. Mm -hmm. I agree. So it's, Absolutely. So, so it's really all about collaborations, partnerships, and engaging all the key stakeholders, right, to drive yeah. this uh, journey to, to success, right? And, and the data analytics. So, you know, right. whether you're doing right. the beta testing, uh, you know, as a product idea, or whether right. you're looking at different options, you know, through the A-B testing, it's all right. about the data and uh, capturing the data, analyzing it. And uh, right. but you know, way before you start, you also need to define what does success mean for this initiative? Right. And uh, to find the KPIs early on and work right. to achieve that uh, KPI values that you're looking for. I right. think and number one, never go and ask someone, never ask for, I would like you to deliver me a digital transformation because <laughs> digital transformation is not a goal, it is a strategy. And consequently, right. a strategy with no clear goal is right. all all the problems will happen at that point right. in time. Yeah. And I, I, so, many, so often we get folks coming in and say, I need a digital transformation. To do what? To, right. to what end? And I think it's always important to say, to what end and why? And, um, you know, because you may not necessarily need that. That might not be the problem. It's almost like right. it's, mm -hmm. it's malpractice. And that's where I would say, you know, if you go and you pres prescription without diagnosis, it's called right. malpractice, even in business. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. So both. It's already eleven plus PM oh, at night oh, yeah. and, you, and, and you're still awake. <laughs> thank you very much. Guys, yeah. it's time for us to say our goodbyes. Uh, thank yeah. you very much. Uh, we look forward to having you guys uh, uh, back into our panel discussions. 
uh, in the next couple of weeks. So uh, do take care. Good evening and uh, sweet dreams for Sleepo and, uh, and uh, Have a great thanks. day. Thanks. Yeah, have a great day. The rest of you guys. Bye. Bye. And thanks all for right. all the questions. You guys have been Bye. great. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.